97.3 City FM, Relevant Radio, always. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Cityscape. Today we're continuing with the relationship subject, but focusing on ourselves as individuals, as opposed to the other person. Last time we are talking about pleasing your other half, being romantic. Today we're going to talk about you. Welcome to Cityscape. <laughs> So we all know that in relationships, you need to compromise. Without compromising, you can't be with another human being. And this is not just sort of a relationship with you and your boyfriend, you and your husband. Even with friendships, you have to compromise. But right now, focusing more on an intimate relationship, relationship with your boyfriend, your husband. How important do you think compromising is? Compromising is very important. Um, In the first place, it's two different people from two different worlds, two different spaces, two different families, two different backgrounds. And this is no secret, it's said all the time. And in trying to find as seamless as possible uh, a continuum for these two people so that you're comfortable within that space of love, then definitely you have to compromise. And sometimes those compromises are difficult compromises to make, but at the end of it all, it can make you a better person. Other times, the compromises are little things like whether or not you should squeeze the toothpaste from the bottom or the middle of the tube, mm-hmm. you know. And so it could do with food, like if your of other half is allergic to something, yeah. you just not eating that thing, just get them out of the Most danger, definitely. that's compromising. So, so you, as opposed to cooking two separate meals, you can say, okay, I'm just going to share a meal with you all the time. So I'm, my mom did it, for example. My, my dad doesn't eat pork for various reasons. So my mom says, okay, I'm not doing pork. So for the longest time, my mom hasn't had pork. Compromising. Exactly. And it's important. Because she doesn't want a situation where she feels like eating. You never know what will happen. You're cooking and you accidentally put the pork inside instead of the beef. So she doesn't eat it. And there are compromises like that. There are more um, difficult things. Maybe your partner has a physical challenge, for Mm -hmm. example. I know a couple like that. Um, The gentleman, um, has he, he uses a wheelchair and this happened before they even got married but brilliant guy owns great businesses and so his wife has had to sort of take up his health care so even though they have a home nurse they can afford that she comes home early from work so she's made sure that whatever she's doing with her career allows her to be flexible enough to be there for her husband right, you know? right. and And of course, you also have to. I'm sure she's had to decide and sort of sieve out some things they can't do instead of events they can't attend, places they can't go, and that's okay. She always, she never thought she would do anything like in vitro or adopt. So she did in vitro fertilization the first time. She had a a baby boy, beautiful baby boy. He's eight years old now, and they wanted to have more kids, but it wasn't working out, and the the gentleman's sperm count was low, and. The doctor said, well, because of his stress that comes with his condition, that could be one of the problems. But the lady was growing also, they adopted, Mm -hmm. you know. Right. And they live in Ghana. Which which is absolutely amazing. But then begs the question of where do you draw the line? Because in as much as it's important to compromise on certain things in order for you guys to be together, in order for you to coexist, you also need to remember that you are an individual. Right? Of course. You were a certain person, you had certain attributes, you did certain things prior to being in this relationship. So where do you think it's important to sort of think, okay, this is it. I can't go past this. So maybe what thing do you think you shouldn't compromise with? The very first thing that people need to realize about compromise is that it needs to be your choice. Even though in some way you're doing it, not just for yourself, but for the other person in the relationship, at the end of it all, it has to be your choice. You shouldn't feel like you're obliged to or that you have to because guess what if you start feeling that way somewhere along the line when you can't make that compromise anymore because you're not happy with, with the outcome of the compromise mm-hmm. you backtrack and right. that will affect your relationship and you equally start resenting that other person that because you, you're feeling like it's, it's not my fault. decision yeah it's your fault exactly. I'm compromising for you therefore you put me in this unhappy space that is it and with that one of the things that I think are very important is your individuality you should not compromise compromise on that you are an individual right of course what else do you think we shouldn't compromise on no you shouldn't compromise on your individuality but let me just say that sometimes 
there are situations where um, that compromise that you have to make might actually make you a better person. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can think of an example. Assuming you're the sort of person who loves to go out all the time, you, as a woman, for example, you have a crazy nightlife, and now you're going to have kids. You have a baby at home. You can't do that as much. You might have a nanny, but you can't chuck your kid to the nanny. Kuda, you love kids. You know that. I don't see you doing that. I could be you a nanny. Not be able, you, know? you would not be able, not be able to, to leave your Absolutely child. Not. And that's a compromise that you're making for your, your partner, yes, because your partner might not say, oh, you're a mother now, stay at home, but also for your child. And it makes you have person. bonding time with Absolutely. your child. So it makes, makes you a better, you a better mother. mother. You understand where I'm coming from. So that's one example. But we're, um, you know, compromising on something like your career. And I have been in relationships where um, the guys have said to me in the past, ah, you want to do poetry. What's the meaning of that? Uh, you like to write. You're writing plenty. How does that bring you money? Now, at several points in my life, I thought, should I be rethinking my career? Because if this person is telling me this, saying things like, oh, I need a woman who's going to support me financially and be the backbone of my home, anything can happen. Should I be rethinking? Mm -hmm. But then I found someone who appreciates what I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I didn't compromise on that. Mm -hmm. And I would have been very miserable if I were not able to do the things that I do. And that would have made me a very ugly person. So compromising your individuality, very important. Another thing I wouldn't compromise on is, um, for example, the way I like to dress. It ties back into individuality. Why wouldn't I? Because I live my, my, my art, I live my craft. And to box me in and say like, the other time somebody invited me to an event and they say dress professional. And I said, what do you mean by professional? Because a skirt suit, which is charcoal black with black heels is professional. But in my line of work, it doesn't really cut it. So what do you mean by this? Oh, no, you know, professional, every lady should have a skirt suit. And I say, you know, I'm not attending your event. I'm sorry, like, I'm sorry. I don't have a, sk a skirt suit. Just to put that out there. I don't have a skirt suit. And even if you did, it would probably be something very avant-garde. Exactly. You know. Another thing that I think is very important is you not compromising on your ability to make decisions. And I'm saying this, and I... I don't mean that your partner or your other half may come at you in a negative way where they're making all the decisions for you. I mean in the sense that you, you could be the type of woman that genuinely enjoys being married. You yes. enjoy your husband taking the lead. You enjoy him making decisions for you. You go to a restaurant, he, tell, he says, okay, I know my wife will eat X. Or you go purchase some clothes, he says, no, 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 I know my wife will want A, B, C, D. Making all those decisions for you. I think that's important to always try and make your own decisions only because you get to a point where you're so comfortable that you forget to take care of yourself very, how to take it you forget very how true. to do it and then when you get into situations where your partner is not in that position to make such decisions for you you're anymore, stuck or for some reason he doesn't have the time to make your decisions for you then you're stuck exactly and you, and you become a shadow of yourself and then you start raving and ranting and I mean, if, you're, if you're a woman you're, mm -hmm. you're nagging and then you start having issues in your relationship, in Absolutely. your marriage. Absolutely. Another thing I think that um, we should be very careful not to compromise on is our principles. So why am I saying this? Our principles are the very core of who we are, our virtues. So if, for example, I have no problem with people who smoke. Mm -hmm. I have friends who smoke, I have family members who smoke, but I could not live in the same house with someone who smoked. And um, it might sound like a very petty thing, but in, it, for me, it's more about me being allergic to smoke. But for some people, it's deeper than that. They just feel like it's a dirty habit and they don't want it in their home. Mm -hmm. Now, you might say, okay, I love this person. I'm going to take it hook, line, and sinker. But every time you smell that smoke, you're resenting that person for making you accept something, especially if it's something that you preach about, you, you talk about to your friends and say, don't do it. Mm -hmm. And then the person living in your home who sleeps in your bed Does is it. doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think don't compromise on your principles because again, you don't have control over what happens in the future when you do that. Absolutely. This is something that we cannot talk about. It's a big thing amongst couples. Your privacy. Giving up your privacy. I'm, I'm in the middle with this one only <laughs> because, right? I don't think you should give up your privacy. When I'm talking privacy, I'm talking pin codes and passwords. 
to pass it to your phone, all to your that. social media, to all that sort of stuff. I don't think you should give it up. And at the same time, I also think you get to a point where you have no choice but to give it up. Because here's the, here's the thing, if you're sitting in front of your husband or your wife and you ask your wife a question and then she says, no, that's private. Or your husband says, no, that's private. Aren't you going to be like, hold yeah. up, hold up. What, what, what what's do you private? Mean? What's private? What do you mean? What's private? You're sharing your lives. So what is private? So what I think is you, you shouldn't compromise on having that conversation. Um, why am I saying this? There are some men who have said to their wives, my work is my business. Uh, and that's how deep the privacy issue can go. In my work is my business. Oh, I, I bring money home. Don't ask me questions. And I know couples like that. Yeah. Don't ask, so as to whether he, he's, he's dealing all sorts of negative things, you have no idea if he's um, If he's stolen people. from somebody you or... You don't know. What? You don't know. You don't know. And you have those things happening in your home. Um, I do think that it's, a, it's an important conversation to have if your husband, your wife, your partner is uncomfortable with you in their space. Because there are some people, it's not about them doing anything negative. They just like their space. And their space includes their cell phones, mm -hmm. their tablets, their computers. And they don't want anybody in there, even if you're their significant other. Now, if you as a person are uncomfortable with that, you need to say so. And maybe find a compromise. And if you can't, I'd say if you're not already heading, don't do it because these things have grave consequences down the line. Typical example, um, there's this uh, friend of mine, mm -hmm. okay, now he gets married to this lady who is a phone freak. So to the, oh sweetheart, buy me a new phone, I don't like, it. new phone comes out, she has it and she doesn't really care if it's Apple or Samsung as long as she just loves her gadgets. Mm -hmm. Okay, and she also likes to put passwords on those things. Not just because, it's not, it has nothing to do with her husband, but she just feels like people, because she's always using nice gadgets, will pick up her phone, try to explore and see things that they, they, they don't need to see or they're not supposed to see. Now, her husband tells her that she should give him her password because um, he wants to use the phone. And he also says that he, she has his password, so he doesn't see why it's a big deal. And this lady says, no, but he's forgotten that in the very beginning, she told you that this is something that I don't compromise on. Absolutely. And now it's become a huge issue in their mm -hmm. marriage mm -hmm. because he sees a little, you know, with iPhones, the WhatsApp messages pop up on the screen before you even open it. He sees a little message like, hey, dear, and then he's freaking out. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't know what the rest of it exactly. says. So that's the thing. If, if you want to make a decision, either decide to have each other's passwords or, or, not. or not at all. Both of you make that decision. And make it consciously. Don't just say, okay, I want to please him. So I'll say, no, 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 I'm okay with it and this, that, and the other. You need to be open and you need to be honest. Right? And with that, we are done, guys. It is a wrap. My two cents. I genuinely believe that you need to have conversations about the things that you can and cannot compromise on. You should not lose your individuality. And at the same time, something I didn't mention early on is don't get rid of your friends and your family. You you had those people long before you had this relationship you always need to remember that they're still there they still require your attention they still want to talk to you want to know what's going on in your life and this that and the other all right so conversation is the most important thing and this is prior to you guys getting into anything serious and serious i mean marriage or anything of that sort you need to have these conversations because at the end of the day 10 years down the line five years down the line a year down the line of living together you will have issues but at the same time, don't forget to be yourself. Your you is important. We'll see you guys next time.